Hello everybody. Do you, do you hear me? First of all, is this working? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm gonna show you. A, we're gonna talk about web components. Uh, I'm gonna give you an overview. What are we gonna do today? So I'm gonna talk a little bit. Uh, get a small introduction of what web components are. Uh, then we're gonna have a hands-on and creating a dummy, a really dummy, uh, web component. And then we're gonna continue on a hands-on thing and we will convert an existing uh, script to web components. And finally, we will see the usage of a web component in Joomla 4. Uh, and then questions and answers. Uh, that's me, Dimitris. Uh, I did some work. I think I removed Mutools, most of them from Joomla 3. I did some stuff like drag and drop in TanyMC, the new calendar. Uh, I'm part of the new media manager with Alon, Kasun, David, and uh, Kiaran. And I'm doing some work also for Joomla 4. And yeah, I'm also in the JavaScript group. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the evolution of the web. Uh, so the web is not how it used to be a few years ago. So you all know Tim Berners-Lee. He, he's the founder of everything. Uh, so he had the project, he had to combine uh, different things from universities, institutions, so that's ha how uh, the web was born. Maybe you don't know that Steve Jobs was there when the web was born. And he was there through this device. And this is the first server ever that served the WWW. Okay, so uh, without not going too, too deep on this one, the first version of uh, HTML, which is the hypertext language that we use and we serve as pages, uh, it wasn't that good. It was like text and links. Uh, it wasn't interactive. It was really, really bad. Uh, so we had some uh, some progress from that time, and actually it was around HTML4 that the web is kind of like the web that we have right now with HTML5. The differences, there are differences, there are more tags, there are more sugar stuff, but the functionality is almost the same. Uh, so, yeah, the good part for uh, the websites came when people start using JavaScript and start doing things like interactive. So you click on something and you get some interaction. You go to another page and stuff like that. So fast forward, this guy again uh, comes and this disturbs the ecosystem with that thing. And that thing give us responsive de design and it also later on give us apps. One thing that many people uh, might not know is that the first version of iPhone didn't have any apps. If you have to do anything, any code for iPhone, you had to do it through your Safari. It was all web. So uh, this is the first, and yeah, that, let's go a few years later. Uh, from 2007, it was the release of iPhone 7, iPhone 1. Uh, that was the first application that it wasn't an app, but it was a native JavaScript uh, site. And this is something that 
So if you open right now mobile.twitter.com, it's the same thing like the application that you download from the App Store or the uh, what Google Store, but it's a small thing. It's JavaScript and it's delivered through uh, the web, so you don't have to use the App Store. And this is the era that we are currently in. So sites are going to be PWAs, progressive web apps. So instead of having a static or dynamic site, uh, in three years time, we, we, we all gonna talk about uh, web apps. So all, almost all uh, sites at some point will be web applications. Uh, there are so the problem with that with all this evolution is that um, PWAs are pretty new and they come with new API and new good things but we also have uh, interactions that we care about like models or sliders and stuff like that and people behind uh, Google and the other browsers they came out with uh, some nice uh, tools they call it uh, uh, web components uh, which basically is just a set of specs uh, it the first uh, the first version, because right now we're in version one, it used to be version zero. It had HTML templates, custom elements, shadow DOM, and HTML imports. It was a proposal from Google. The last part is not with us anymore, so it's only the three uh, technologies: HTML templates, custom elements, and shadow DOM. So HTML Templates basically is just a fraction of a template or a fraction of uh, some HTML code. Uh, the good thing with template is that you can have the template iterating. So you can have like in a table the, the row and then you just iterate that and you don't, you don't have to create element, append some class, blah, blah. So instead of doing repeated work, you just uh, import the HTML. You assign the values, uh, the variables that you want to change for each line. And it's very nice. It's a very nice and very easy way to, to do uh, HTML in JavaScript. Uh, it looks like that. So you have a basic HTML. Uh, which the only difference is that you have a template and this thing you can iterate it and you can have like a million lines with one line of code. Second part is Shadow DOM and this is a bit tricky. So uh, are there any people using or used React or Vue? Okay. Uh, right, so Shadow DOM is, uh, is technology that uh, the browsers are creating except from the DOM tree. Uh, they create also another tree which is hidden from uh, the programmer or from the end user. The good thing is that whatever goes to Shadow DOM is encapsulated it means that uh, since the developer doesn't have direct access to that, it cannot change. The, that means you cannot easily break something unless if you want to. Uh, it has some other problems in Joomla, but I'll talk about that later on. Uh, the main thing uh, that uh, makes this technology very very attractive is custom elements and basically custom elements is the capability for creating your own custom HTML elements 
So you have by default browsers sip with uh, a bunch of elements like P, which stands for paragraph, div, span, button, input. But all these are limited and their functionality is known. And you, if you want to extend and have, let's say, something different for an input, you, you have to do it through JavaScript and then it doesn't look very good, even if you use jQuery or whatever. Uh, there are great resources. Uh, the paper for uh, for these technologies in the first link, W3, uh, it's a standard. All the browsers have said that they're going to implement it. Uh, right now, it's implemented for Safari and Chrome. Uh, it's under flag for internet, uh, no, Edge and uh, Mozilla. And shortly, most probably, it will come to stable next version or next year. Uh, good resources again from Mozilla and Google. Uh, there are great resources if you want to actually see code, how things are happening. Uh, we already, as Joomla, have uh, a project that we're working on the uh, custom elements. Uh, yes, and I think that's the part with the presentation. So let's move on and see that in action. If you have a computer, you can follow me here. It's you don't need anything else apart the computer, uh, Chrome, and just an editor. Uh, it's really simple. What we're gonna do? So let's create a new file. Let's call it index two dot html and. Let's have a div with hello world. You just erase a bit the uh, pump, pump, pump. Yes, pump. yes. Let's close this. Right, so you, you have this file, and if you go and execute it, you expect to see just hello world, right? So let's see what this hello world actually is. So if we do a document dot query. This is the same thing like writing jQuery dollar div. It's exactly the same. Okay. So if we inspect this and say, what is your constructor? So the constructor name is, do you see that? No, you cannot see that. So the constructor name is HTML div element, right? So if I go and uh, change that, from div to span, So every element has its own class uh, in the JavaScript, in, in the DOM. So let's see how, how we can actually do something interesting here. So let's say uh, 
we do a custom. Custom elements uh, are not allowed to be one word because that is reserved only for the elements that are shipped with the browser. So you have to have something like one word does another word and then you can have many dashes and other words but it at the minimum it expects to be something does something else so let's try custom element and as you see nothing changes uh, we still have the same thing but the interesting part here is that if we check what this thing actually is we see that it's just an HTML element so before it used to be HTML div or span so we're missing the, the, the part that says HTML custom element. And that part is missing because basically uh, we didn't code anything. So the custom elements has the part that it's the uh, HTML markup. And then you have the JavaScript part where, where, where you say uh, this element uh, is attached to this code. So let's try and do that. So I'm going to have a script here. I'm going to do it inline. And this is JavaScript ES6. So the way you do it is you define a class like, let's say, custom element. And then you say X html element right so we have the class and then all we need to do is just uh, make the connection between the class and the actual tag that we have in our html and this is done through uh, custom elements define and then you say that I want to to make an attachment from custom element to the class custom element so if we run this again nothing happens we didn't expect something to happen but this time if we go and check the constructor the constructor now is custom element is the class that we we just assign and the good part here is that you can do whatever you want here because it's your code it, you can have any interaction anything anything at all so there are the API has three life cycles, life cycle uh, class events, events. Uh, so you have always the constructor. For the constructor, uh, it's always good to have super. And we can do something like uh, this dot inner, inner, inner HTML is equal to that means that at the construction the text will change to another text uh, you cannot type sorry uh, so if we just run it it used to be hello world now it's another text uh, 
that's if you want to, to open something when you actually construct. Uh, but the, the life cycle events uh, that make more sense is than when you have uh, appended. So you have the connected callback, which actually is connected callback, uh, which is fired when uh, the element is actually inserted in the DOM. And we can have again the, the same thing here, like this dot inner uh, HTML. And let's make it like that. And in fire. Yeah, sorry, my typing <laughs> is not fine. It's like coding. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, that's the base idea of uh, web components is that you have some HTML markup, you connect it to uh, the to some class, and then you have the functionality that you want. So uh, the lifecycle events is connected callback, which is fired when that thing is inserted. Uh, you have the disconnected callback, which obviously is called when the thing is removed from the DOM. Uh, so let's say alert uh, Yeah So if I try to remove that That fires it's Yeah, that's basically uh, the API the good thing with custom elements is that they have also attributes. So, uh, like, if you have an input, an input field, uh, you can have something like type equals text or equals number. Uh, you can define your own names for the attributes and your own attributes in that sense, and that is good because you can control. Uh, the elements through the, the attributes. So if you have a model, instead of having to do the uh, open close with different classes, like div class equals whatever, and then you append the class open. And that means that uh, you make the CSS so that thing displays. Uh, you don't have to do that anymore, so you just have one attribute open. And when that attribute is there, the model will be open. And you can anticipate that in your uh, CSS. So that was the easy part. Are there any questions so far? Yeah. Is there a polyfill which supports Yes, there are two polyfills. Uh, there is one polyfill from Google, uh, which supports all the uh, technologies of web components, like Shadow Dome, Template, uh, and uh, Custom Elements. Uh, but y you know the, the pages AMP, Google AMP, AMP pages? 
So those pages, uh, if you check the source, they do have custom elements. And the, the polyfill that they're using is not the one that they created. They're using another one. But the thing is that, yeah, these are, th there are polyfills, so you can use these technologies right now. There's no reason to hold back and say it's not supported or something. And the polyfills there are really, really small. Like for the custom elements, is less than 10 kilobytes. Any other questions? Yes? Do the API offer the possibility to validate the value of attributes in some way? No. The, the bad thing with uh, uh, you have to do it yourself. with the API is it's really low level, so you have to do everything yourself. But there are a lot of uh, libraries out there. There is Polymer, uh, and there are a couple more uh, that add sugar on top. So instead of uh, adding, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, in order to, to validate attributes and uh, have, uh, if you ever have any events, uh, and you assign event and then somehow you want to remove the event because you remove some parts of the element, etc. Uh, those, those libraries are really good on handling all this with less code that you have to repeatedly write over and over again. There is always the thing that if you use a library then you are attached to that library. So if something goes wrong React, <laughs> yeah, there is a balance. So you, you have to see what you try to, to produce. If you really need some, uh, some way to, to do it uh, in a fast way, then use a library and, okay. Any other question? Yes. Uh, do you know how um, search engines uh, handle um, web components? Because yes. uh, other uh, HTML elements have a, um, mm -hmm. a meaning, a semantic. And so how do they see this? The custom element, even if you don't attach any, uh, any functionality, so you don't do anything uh, script side, JavaScript side, it's going to be interpreted basically like a spam. So it doesn't matter what you put there. It's going to be whatever you put and the browser doesn't understand, it always interprets it as a spam. Mm -hmm. So that has implications, obviously, because the uh, design might break. It will. Uh, but other than that, uh, the, the data is there. So. Uh, the search en engines uh, already uh, scroll that. Mm -hmm. Unless, if you're hiding uh, <laughs> things, yeah, and imagine. then it gets a little bit weird. Uh, but even the uh, search engines like Chrome, they do actually run scripts. It's not uh, they just scroll the page, they do actually run the scripts that exist in the page. So, no problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes? Um, I have a definite number of questions. Um, will it recognize uh, the like standard attributes like, like uh, I say ARIA something or other? Would they use the ARIA values in the same way as other issues? Yes, values? yes. There are extending already uh, the functionality that already exists in the browser. So whatever the browser is implementing for area hidden, it's going to be the same. So if I, if I attach here, let's say, uh, this dot, uh, set attribute, 
area hidden. And then probably true. Uh, so yeah, the area hidden is there, and it's gonna be interpreted uh, by the browser uh, the same way that it will be. It will be in if instead of custom element you had a div there or span or something else. It doesn't make any any difference for the browser. But in the case, it's, it's being displayed. So. You always yeah. The the attributes are always displayed. Yes, it's it's the same. So if I change that to div, Oops. you have to. Th this is hidden for the uh, readers, not screen for readers. screen readers, not for the. Yeah. But uh, the the point is that it works exactly the same, uh, it, either if it's div or custom element or whatever you want to name the the element. Okay, let's move to something more interesting here. Uh, okay, so this is uh, an interesting thing. So we take, we will take one uh, slider. The slider is available uh, in this address. Just go to GitHub will be thrown ideal image slider and you can download the, the JavaScript. I haven't touched it in any way. It's what it is. Uh, I just downloaded also the CSS for that part. And I just made one uh, HTML only with the style, uh, a couple of images and the JavaScript and then I'm just calling this and the end result should be should be this, right? So if you want, let's say, to, to convert that to a custom element, so instead of using this markup, which is div ID slider and the images. Uh, how will you do that? So let's dive into that. So let's make first of all a custom element. I named it my first slider. As you see, I have here. If we compare this this page with the the plain div, I do have some height, interval, transition, duration, and effect. And the fact is that this, these attributes actually are these attributes. So instead of having to have another script to fire, uh, to execute the slider, to initialize the slider, uh, we actually doing it in a different way. So we pass the attributes that we care for here in our custom element. And then that should be OK in our code in the JavaScript. So how will the uh, JavaScript part look like? We still have the same code. The only thing is that I change cons uh, ES5 to ES6, <laughs> most part, part of it. Uh, so this is exactly the same code that you will download from the repository for the slider. And after that, we have our custom element. Where is it? So, yeah, and the custom element is pretty simple. We have a class, and at the end we say my first element is attached to that class. Uh, the good part here is that 
this is how we say to a custom element, uh, check this attribute. If it's changed, uh, then you can do something more. Uh, also, you see that we have some getters and some setters muted. Uh, this is uh, this is a good practice to have setters and getters for all your attributes. It's a, a good way to uh, to go through them through getters and setters instead of uh, running uh, actual code like this get attribute. So it's 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 a good thing to have. So we're not doing anything in the constructor. And the only thing that we actually do is that uh, we have exactly the same code that we had before in the inline script. But the only difference here is that we don't search for the element because the element is already there. And we just pass the, the same parameters in a different fashion uh, because right now these parameters coming from the attributes so we're just parsing the attributes and, and possibly this should work yes and yes it works as you see it's the element is my first slider and you have attributes here so basically if I change this from slide to fade the effect should be different oh yeah I cannot do that I have to do it here so exactly what you asked before David <laughs> Yeah, I didn't implement it. Uh, yeah. Okay, where's the code? So yeah, if we change this from slide to fade, and we rerun this page, it should fade. Actually, if you if you try to do this, it shouldn't take you more than half an hour maximum to convert any any jQuery or vanilla script to custom elements. So what's the gain? What's what's the gain to have something like that? Uh, to see that, let's go to Joomla itself and. Okay, before we go here, let's go to administrator. So the first thing that you see here, this this uh, alert, is an actual custom element. And the good part of that is that this thing is uh, CSS framework agnostic. It means that if you interchange, uh, if you interchange your template with uh, some other template with foundation or UI kit or whatever, that element will still uh, function the same and will still look the same no matter what. So that's one good part. But uh, what I want to show you here is how to actually uh, get that element, that slider, into Joomla. Uh, so I think I have created a module. Slider, yes. Yeah. So it's just a module, yeah. Probably we have to see the code for that. Uh, yeah, give me one second.
so the actual code is really really simple so all we care is the template and in order to use uh, a web component all you have to do is this line uh, whoever added ever CSS or JavaScript to any of modules component or whatever in Joomla you already know the uh, the method is jhtml uh, colon colon underscore script or CSS and now we have web component and you after that you say I want to register the actual name of the web component with this uh, with the JavaScript you can have it as a relative path or absolute path the version is to make sure that it works uh, through updates and once you do that you get your slider in your Joomla <coughs> was it hard? <laughs> thank you questions? no? yes? when is it going to be included in Joomla? It is already in Joomla 4. In 4? Okay. Yeah. When is Joomla 4 going to be released? <laughs> I cannot answer that. You have to, to ask George. I can tell you, Tuesday. Yeah. This Tuesday? Which Tuesday? Uh, which Tuesday? Oh. Ah. <laughs> the point is, if you want to to backport this uh, in Joomla 3 it's gonna be a bit awkward because you're gonna have mood tools jQuery <laughs> and then custom elements it doesn't look very nice <laughs> I don't know how ES6 will be actually managed in Joomla 3 it's not a good idea I think but you can do it, <laughs> Nicolas. <laughs> Any other question? No. Okay. Thank you.